hi and welcome to my channel so we're going to be talking about three of the best and most positive changes that the uk government has confirmed and implemented and that we are 100 percent sure that that is something that is going to be ongoing both now and also for 2024 so if you're new to my channel as usual you're welcome if you haven't joined this family hit the subscribe button so that you're the first person to be notified every single day when i drop a new video on here and i just want to start by saying that there are some negative changes or proposals that have been suggested and obviously while these always seem to get the headlines but there are also some really amazing positive changes that the government has implemented and confirmed that it is definitely worth focusing on these positive changes rather than dwelling more on the negatives so I'm going to start by saying that um, when it comes to, say, the first change is something that's going to positively affect millions of people, whether you're in the UK looking for visa sponsorship or you're still out of this amazing country, it is an amazing opportunity. When it comes to the second change, it's actually the best of all the changes that have been, that has been implemented and confirmed. And when it comes to the third change that I'm going to talk about, it is one that people who are very smart will be able to take advantage of this amazing update, which means that it's all good and fine for the government to bring all these policy changes. But if you don't know how to make use of these opportunities, then it doesn't make any sense anyway, which means that change number three is for the smartest people who really know how to get into the nitty gritty to make the most of the best opportunity. So I'm going to be explaining to you all these three changes. So you definitely want to make sure you watch this till the very end. And when it comes to the first change, like I've said, it is absolutely amazing and something that is really welcome. Also, I do have a free newsletter, by the way. I've dropped the link in the comment section below where I share information about free visa sponsorship opportunities to move to the UK or to switch your visa if you're already in this beautiful, amazing country. You know, I also share info such as this, you know, updates when it comes to UK visas and immigration so that you're up to date because if you want to move to the uk or you're in the uk you need to know what is happening because the more informed you are the more successful you're going to be and talking about success i am very passionate about career progression in the uk for me it is not only about getting to this country it is what you do with yourself when you get to this country that is ultimately going to make a difference and i always say that the jobs that you start with in the UK, it doesn't matter. But five years from today, 10 years from when you start, what are you going to be doing? Are you still going to be stuck in the same position? No, that's why career progression is a must. If you get your foot in the UK, get yourself into the room, the next thing you want to open your eyes and be thinking, what about career progression? What else can I do? How can I earn more? work less and retire early because look many of these visa sponsorship jobs are very stressful they are very demanding you know they are really really low paying and so you should use that as an entry level but please do not get stuck in those positions because you deserve the best for all the effort that you take to get to the uk the least you can do to yourself and to your family is to progress in this country so i'm also share all of that information about career progression you know i started as a carer myself to then progressing to the most senior clinical nursing position i now work for the nhs so i started from the rock bottom to getting right to the top of the nursing ladder and so i say this out of experience out of passion out of concern seeing so many of us that are stuck in the same job for 20 years 30 years it is a wasted opportunity so join my newsletter in the comment section below. You drop your name and email. It won't take you 20 seconds to join. It's completely free. I send that info to you and then you can pursue those opportunities. And but if you're watching my videos, you better be, you know, one of the top 1% of people that like me are keen on personal and professional development. Because like I always say, 99.9% .9 of people will do nothing about what they want to achieve. They'll be like, oh, Melvis, I want to do this. I want to do that. But look. Career progression is tough. Doing things the right way is not easy. I know that. And that's why I say it's only for the top 1% of people. So again, as you're watching this, ask yourself, are you part of the top 1% or are you part of the 99% that will do nothing about your progress and get stuck in the same position? Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know. So what is the first change? The first change is that carer jobs and senior carer jobs will continue recruiting come 2024 which means recruiting is currently ongoing i know people that keep messaging me saying to me melvis 
you know, is the UK still recruiting carers? Can I still move to the UK as a carer? Of course you can. And it's been confirmed that come 2024, the UK will still continue to recruit carers and senior carers because they will remain on the shortage occupation list or whatever that's going to be called come 2024. And also, mind you, the T's and C's are going to be different, which means although they're going to carry on recruiting, but coming to the UK today, coming to the UK now is going to make a massive difference to if you come to the UK in December, of 2024 for example so there are certain things that even though the process is still ongoing it doesn't mean that you're going to do nothing today and wait until tomorrow because those of you that procrastinate oh melvis i'm going to start tomorrow melvis i'm going to start in january melvis what about march look there's no room for procrastination because every single day that changes the laws the rules the policies are also changing so again you want to make hay while the sun shines so also if you've got any questions by the way as i'm going along Leave it in the comment section below. You're going to find my contact details, obviously, on my newsletter. My WhatsApp number is there. My, you know, email address is there. Do get in contact with me. If you're also there thinking, hmm, Melvis, I'm part of the top 1% and I want to get started with this journey ASAP. I need to get in contact with yourself. Do that because I've got a private career coaching program. I'll drop the link in the description box below or the about section of this channel where I offer one-to-one -one tailored individualized personalized guidance with career progression and free visa sponsorship jobs in the uk but i must warn you to say that if you're joining my private coaching program it is not a walk in the park these are employers that offer free visa sponsorship but it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of dedication to get these jobs rightfully so so you need to be ready to put in the work you need to be ready to make the effort in order to get those jobs which means if you don't want to do any work at all, you don't want to apply for jobs, you don't want to do the interview, that program is not for you. And that's why I say it's only for the top 1% of people that are willing to invest the time and energy that is needed for their own personal and professional development. So if you're keen on going through the process with myself, with my guidance, you know, we have live sessions every week you know where you can attend interact with other members talk about the challenges that you're going through so that we can find solutions together hear from other people what challenges they are going through so that you can get the support that you need you know so that's what it's about if you're looking for nhs jobs you're looking to switch your visa sponsorship you're looking for apprenticeships in the uk career progression you want to get into nursing you're not getting your nursing registration because you're now in the uk working as a carer but you're a qualified nurse or midwife and you're thinking oh my goodness it is time to transition you're working in dumb care or private companies or care homes and you're wanting to transition into the nhs i can support you with that but like i say if you don't want to take part you know in the process that program is not right for you it is for people that are willing to take part in the process and want to be part of the journey which means you need to apply for jobs you need to do an interview in order for you to get a job because that's the normal proper way of looking for jobs rather than just sit back and think oh melvis you know when am i going to get my visa sponsorship it does not work so career progression opportunities as well that's what it's all about so again like i've said check the description box below or the about section of this channel and you're, and you're going to see a link to join um and you know do feel free to do so also share this video obviously with your friends loved ones colleagues so that they're aware of these changes they're aware of these updates that the uk is making and that it may ease some of the concerns that they are having regarding um you know the whole situation and the whole negativity that it goes on sometimes if you're watching youtube videos so what is the second change the second change is that nurses midwives doctors nhs staff are exempted from the um ban when it comes to dependence as well as the salary threshold what this means is that if you're a nurse or a doctor you know what i mean or a midwife even though the salary threshold will be increased to thirty-eight thousand seven hundred pounds per year basic salary for you to move to the uk or to bring your dependents these professions are going to be exempted from this and by the way if you want me to do a video on all the other jobs that are exempted from the ban with bringing dependents or the yeah, maximum salary requirement do leave a comment in the comment section below and you know if you want me to do that leave a comment and i'm happy to do that because if it's not relevant and it's not helpful <laughs> you know what's the point of doing it there is no point so leave a comment in the comment section below so these professions are going to be exempted which means if you're an overseas nurse or you're a midwife or you're a doctor you're coming to work for the nhs you do not need to worry and that's why I always say choosing the right employer to work for in the UK is something that is huge. But as you know, the best option isn't always the easiest option. 
And the easiest option doesn't always mean that it is the best option. Getting a job to work for the NHS, if you're somebody that you've got no degree, for example, you've got no experience, you're looking for entry-level jobs, you know, you're not like a nurse or a midwife and you're like, I want to move to the UK, or you're already in the UK looking for visa sponsorship, getting a job to work for the NHS is the best thing you can do right now. I've shared extensive detailed videos on various NHS jobs that you can get as entry level without any experience whatsoever. Many of them paying over £35,000 per year. You want to check that out. I'm going to link up, you know, one of those videos on here because it's going to make sure that you can, you're exempted from the salary threshold and you can also bring your dependents to the UK. So you need to be very wise when you're choosing which jobs to apply for. And that's the reason why I share these updates with yourself. So that you're aware of what they are and your decision making can gravitate towards the more positive um, outcomes that you can have for yourself and for your amazing family. Also, if you're enjoying this content, just hit the like button. It lets me know you enjoy content like this and obviously I should do more. And also, if there's anything you want to have more information about, do feel free, obviously, to leave that in the comment section below so that I can provide more information that are other people that see it. You know, it could be that they are going through similar circumstances. So they've got experience in that. They may also chip in and be able to guide you with that process because it's all about succeeding together. It's all about progressing together. But like I say, it is not always easy doing the right thing and getting free visa sponsorship jobs. It's not something that is easy. You should not walk in the park. It takes effort, but it is really worth it. And I say this because I support hundreds of people in my program and I know how much effort it takes to do that. But it is something that is really worth it. And you don't need to feel discouraged. It can be very discouraging when you when you apply for jobs and you hear nothing or you get those unfortunate emails, but you just have to be persistent and make sure that you're improving your application every single time you apply. Something is improving from your skills, your knowledge, your application, your supporting information and all of that. And you will definitely get a job. So those are the first two changes. What about the third change? The third change is something that, like I said, you need to be very smart and be careful if you're trying to make use of this third change. It's a good change, but like I say, you need to be very careful because many people are going to end up in a lot of trouble if they try to implement the third change and it's not ideal for them. What is it? It's the fact that you can now come to the UK on a standard visitor visa and find a job. And mind you, this is not to say that you can come to the UK on a visitor visa and work that's not what it is. And the UK government has underlined that on their website, put it in bold to say you're not allowed to work on this visa. So the visa enables you to come to the UK to find a job, which means you can attend interviews. But if you're successful getting a job, you cannot work on this visa. You're not allowed to take any paid work on this visa. So that's something that you need to be very careful because I've already seen lots of YouTube videos saying, oh my God, you can now work in the UK on a visit visa. And obviously it's something that would seem very enticing, but this is not ideal for everybody because I know I shared a video on this a few days ago and I had a conversation during our live session with members of my private coaching program. And they were like, hey, Melvis, do you think this is a good pathway to pursue? And I was like, ultimately each person needs to decide for themselves but if i was in the position right now where i was say out of the uk looking for visa sponsorship would i use this third pathway to come to the uk no i wouldn't i would focus on applying for jobs improving my application every time i would not take a visa to come to the uk as a visitor and then try to apply for jobs because if you're not allowed to work and you don't have any help or support in the uk how are you going to survive? How are you going to live? So you need to be careful. That's why I said it's not ideal for everybody. But there are also other people in my program, for example, that are entrepreneurs, successful financially. You know, they're very comfortable. And I say to them, take it as a working holiday in the UK. You know, you're an entrepreneur. You can afford to come to the UK on this pathway because it's only for people who can afford it. Then it's worth exploring just to see what does the country look like? You know, what is it like? Is it for me? Just have a feel of it. And so, again, this is something that the UK government has confirmed. It is already active right now, which means you can get this visa today and come to the UK to look for jobs, but you cannot work, which means if you're successful getting a visa sponsorship job, you still need to apply for a work visa. You know what I mean? In order for you to start working. So you cannot work on this visa, but you can find a job, which is something that 
people really need to be aware of and not rush into thinking, oh, I'm going to go to the UK on a visitor visa and work. And you end up with people here that are homeless. They can't get a job and they'll be like, oh, my God, I thought I could work. So do be careful with some of these um, opportunities. And that's why I said it's only for people that can really afford it. People that are very smart because, you know, it leads us to something that I get asked all the time. Melvis, do you think that if I move to the UK on another visa, does it increase my chances? of getting visa sponsorship compared to when I'm out of the UK. I'm going to tell you that from my experience supporting hundreds of people through my coaching program, both in and out of the UK, what I have found from my personal experience is that the quality of your application is what is really, really important to those legit employers that are offering free visa sponsorship. They want to know, do you know what the job is about? Are you able to do the job? You know, are you a genuine person that we can trust? And, you know, entrust our clients, our, you know, whatever the job is to you. That's ultimately what matters. There is a handful of employers, I will say, or we want candidates that are already in the UK. But if you're already in the UK and the quality of your application still isn't good, you're still not going to get a job anyway. Which means that the bigger picture is that you need to improve on your application. Whether you're in the UK or you're out of the UK, it doesn't matter because that's what they're looking out for. And that's why you see that there are thousands of people out of the UK coming in. Meanwhile, there are people in the UK that are also struggling with visa sponsorship. If it was only a matter of being in the UK, many people would simply just get jobs because they're here. But that's not the case. And that's why I say it's the quality of your application. You know, your knowledge, your personality. How are you able to shine during that interview? What about your confidence? Those are the things that are ultimately going to make a difference. So don't despair if you're out of the UK or you're in the UK applying. You're getting unfortunate emails. It's part of professional development. It's part of progress. You need to keep pushing through. If you're watching my videos especially, then you need to know that the best things in life don't always come easy. If you're part of my private coaching program, do attend our weekly live sessions. Get in contact with me if you're stuck and you're struggling. Like I say, I understand that it's not a walk in the park, but it is something that we have to do. When it comes to these rules, we have to do that. So check out this other video that I've linked up specially for you. And do get in contact with me if you need any um, personalized guidance. And I'll see you in this video.